How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another fantastic YouTube video. In this one, I'm actually sharing you again, once again, because they're some of the best videos I put out, a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with one of my students, Jake Larson. Uh, and Jake, uh, if you're watching this, what's up, Jake? <laughs> Jake's actually trying to start his um, consulting business, um, and he literally came in like totally blind. Like he had no background, no background in business, no background in anything. And we're only a couple weeks now away from him getting his first client paying him anywhere from like two to four thousand dollars a month in the niche that he's decided to go after so really whether you run an agency or a consulting or coaching business like of any kind we're delivering a service to an existing entity whether it's a person or a business uh you know we've got great programs and we can help you um and jake obviously could afford the one-on-one -on -one help with myself and so we've got a couple calls left and we're well on track to getting him to that six-figure mark with his agency and in this coaching call you're seeing how above and beyond uh, Jake has gone in the niche research portion of his learning. So really I've encouraged him to get interviews with potential business owners that he could help. I've encouraged him to collect data so we can see sort of what services we want to provide. Because if you watch my videos attentively, you notice that I don't talk about like just how to get clients, the simple stuff like that. I, I teach you kind of advanced stuff that like nobody talks about. And one thing I talk about is market backwards. So don't just start with like an idea of what you want to do. Start with what you see that your market needs and then build an idea regarding the solution around that. And that's much easier. You'll make a lot more money doing that, I guarantee it. Um, and so if you're interested in working either in one of our programs or working with me one-on-one, -on -one, or you just need any help, um, well, two things, really. One, hit me up over Instagram. I'll answer questions over there. I'm very active over there. It's a great way to reach out and get just a little bit of a connection uh, with myself also Facebook. We've got a Facebook group. You can just search those up or Kiwi if you could link those in the description That'd be f fantastic um, And then as well if you're ready to take a leap or you're ready to just get some help schedule your one-to-one -one consult with myself and uh, I just want to see sort of where you're at and if you're in a good spot We'll get you the help that you need to grow your agency your consulting your coaching business. So Jake Thank you so much for enrolling excited to be continuing to work with you. Here's one of his coaching calls that we had yesterday and you can just see how hyped I am about getting him his first client. Again, this guy is from scratch. So he was doing like two grand a month with a computer repair business. Uh, he found me online through his brother who referred him to me. Um, and I basically said, scrap your entire computer repair business. Let's start from scratch. I could see that he thought the way that you need to think in order to succeed. Um, and he's committed a lot of money and a lot of his time to working with me and our programs and he's well on track to succeed. So enjoy this coaching call with my student, Jake Larson. Hey, Mr. Larson. How's it going? Going good, man. Going really good. How about you? Pretty good. I was uh, pretty close to your stomping grounds yesterday. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Where down in Anderson. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Why is that? What brought you there? Uh, my sister. She was at the uh, Salah house there, sort of like a Christian retreat for like, she was recovering from a, like an eating disorder. Oh, so. wow. Yeah, so she came back yesterday. So I got up at like five, drove down there, got her, got back at like eight. I'm still exhausted from that, but yeah. yeah that, sounds, that sounds like a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's funny too, man. It's, what was the name of the camp? I'm curious, because I mean, I know a camp down in- Salah Anderson. House. Oh, Salah no, House, like the word, nope. yeah. Never heard of that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I did, uh, I volunteered at this camp called Spring Hill Camps. So it was like a summer camp. Um, Spring Hill, I think that's the name of it, Spring Hill, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's in Anderson, so I figured maybe, who knows? Yeah, neat. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll jump into this. I got a lot of pretty good progress from the last Sick. seven, eight days. Really glad uh, to hear that. Let me hear about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, firstly, I'll start with like the books and, whoops, like the books and stuff. Um, I started Business Secrets from the Bible and Wild at Heart both. I didn't get too far into either of them, but I started on both. Mm -hmm. Pretty insightful, both of them. Wild at Heart is actually yeah. like one of my favorite books already. I'm only like 15% done with it. Uh, yeah, it, business it from awesome. the Bible, it, dude, it is. Yeah, like it, I've always felt like Christianity is kind of like a uh, gets in the way of me being masculine, but this kind of seems like it can go hand in hand. So that was yep. pretty cool. Yeah, hundred percent. Business Seekers from the Bible. The guy like seems like he reads into it a little bit sometimes, but mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty good still. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's good Are you stuff. Using the desk at the you using the desk at the standing position? Yeah, I actually have. So it's a little button. I can just click, check this out. This is the nerdiest crap. I just click down and it goes down. 
and I could click up and it goes up. <laughs> Dude, that is that's dope. I it's I watched dope. the video on it. I was like, I, I get really like screwed up from sitting all day, and I'm like really active and stuff. So I think I'm gonna yeah. probably invest in one when I get the money. To Dude, do it. I I would do it, man. There's some serious like it was a, it was an actual investment. It was like 700 bucks, right? Uh, but like uh -huh. it made me closing. Like I just my my sales calls go better when I'm standing. My client meetings go better when I'm standing everything. So I'll sit down in between meetings, but for meetings, I'll stand back up because mm -hmm. there's something about like when you're standing blood pumps a little bit more and your brain is kind of a bit more active. And you know, when you're sitting yeah. down, it's kind of like the only place that's actually taking blood is your face and brain. When you're standing up, your legs are taking weight, your arms are moving and you know, you're just more, you got more energy. It's really good. Exactly. It's really good. Yeah. 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 So sweet man, let's dive into your agenda, man. I want to make this a really valuable call for you. Sure. Sure. Uh, so I knocked out those polls, uh, like posting all the groups, like just a basic, uh, what do you, the, you saw smart. some of this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I put that in like 18 groups. I got to get up the results for that. Uh, what was actually interesting I found was that, um, let me get it up. I can hear you. I'm just grabbing water. Sorry. Sure. Uh, what I found interesting is that I got the most, I actually have a chart here. Let me share with you. Let me see. Oh, oops. right here. Yeah, so I made the poll like the fifth and then I did like one round then like two days later I took my final rounds. So I got 12 that said they're having the biggest trouble with like people abandoning their car. Mm. Doing follow up for that. Mm. And I gave people the option to like vote for multiple. I mm. figured I'd get more interaction that way. Yep. And then you get like chatbots, brand awareness, like this typical stuff. What I found weird with TikTok was like the least selected one but like i'll get into it in a minute it seems like that's still maybe a viable option yeah it seems like people aren't aware of it you know yeah right so that's that i'm gonna close that out dude that's freaking uh, cool i've never actually never had a student create a pie chart <laughs> really yeah your first one that's pretty cool yeah yeah uh so yeah the polls kind of leaned like do the abandoning cart stuff but yeah. i decided not to just like you know take it and run I had the the other day, I think Thursday and Friday, I got back-to-back -back interviews with digital marketing agencies of two clothing brands. So have you heard of Taylor Stitch? Taylor Stitch, no. No, okay. I got Taylor Stitch and Buffalo Jackson. Okay. They're both like kind of mid-sized. Like I had heard of Taylor Stitch, not, not Buffalo Jackson. Yeah. Uh, and I took some notes talking to both of them. I had two like calls, like 30 minute calls with the both of them, just nice. like discussing stuff, asking them some questions. Nice. I wanted to bring value, but they just kind of knew a lot more than I did. So I really wasn't. Able oh, to. yeah. Oh, I'm so sure. Dude, were they powerful calls? Did they help you clarify some stuff? They were. Yeah, I got. Uh, oh. Yeah, I got from Buffalo Jackson. I got from Wilton Stitch or uh, Taylor Stitch. I'm getting my notes up for both. I'm looking up those Buffalo Jackson and then Taylor Stitch. I'm looking at their sites just to sort of see who you're talking to. Okay, so Buffalo Jackson's like a really, actually, I have a buddy who owns Buffalo Jackson. He literally sent me this site at some point. Really? Awesome. Actually, my bag might be a Buffalo Jackson. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding, bro. It looks like it. Uh, the, the logo is super faded, but I swear it is. That's crazy. Dude, that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so I talked to their marketing manager. He's been there for four years he was working for four years i've been a brand like 11 years yeah uh, so i asked him I'll, I'll share with you actually my, my notes are really sloppy but yeah that's okay did you record the calls were they zoom did you record them no i didn't record them oh man okay that's all right probably should do that next time all right so this is my kind of sloppy notes of everything so you can see he's within four years. The indented stuff is like his stuff that I took notes on. The right. The other stuff is like my questions. Right. Um, so they started out just doing contractors. They went to employees. I don't think that stuff really affects me too much. Right. Uh, he said here, this is Buffalo Jackson. Getting people to the site is pretty easy. Uh, he's selling a high-end good. So building yeah. trust was, was difficult. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you want to just take a look at some of that stuff and let me know. I'm gonna scroll down.
You have some amazing insights, by the way. Yeah. What I found interesting was he uh, said that, like, I was like, do you guys do TikTok, Snapchat marketing? Is that something you're interested in doing? The bold stuff is like my other notes too, by the way, but the stuff yeah. that, this stuff is his stuff. He was like, no, that doesn't really fit. That's what he said. That's all mm, I remember. He doesn't, 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 doesn't fit. fit. And he didn't, really dig in, he didn't really dig into what that means. No, I really didn't, but mm. I probably should have. But he was like, yeah. no, it doesn't really fit with our brand. He was like, we're shooting for, he said somewhere what their niche is. Um, mm. I think he was said something about like middle-aged males. I don't know where it is in here. Mm. Uh, yeah, here. He was like, they flushed their brand to be nine to five middle-class males who like went hiking on the weekend and kind of wanted to like feel extra like out Western just by going out. Right. You know, here and there. So he said it didn't fit. I think that it still would if like I were able to get some proof of concept. Right. Concept. For sure. I mean, ROI is ultimately what they care about. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. they say it doesn't fit, but if you're running ads and you're spending $200 to sell a $400 product, then like, why wouldn't you? So exactly. You know, I, yeah. I, I hear that all the time from brands. They're like, Oh, it doesn't fit our brand. I'm like, well, really what does like specifically you're saying you want middle-aged like, there's, there's, you know, you can select that targeting, I'm sure, on TikTok's ad platform. Influencers on TikTok, influence, you know, influencer marketing, select targeting on ad, ad platforms. Like, yeah, you can target people who have a job who are, you know, 25 to 40 years old who like hiking. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get up the other one because this was the day later. And like after doing the first interview, the first one, I was a little bit not nervous, but like I didn't know what to do, what mm -hmm. to say. The second mm -hmm. one I felt went much better. The guy was also, the first guy was nice, but this guy was just like amazing. He's like really interested in, in like following it with me. I'm going to share this second one with you. Six or sick, not six. Let me see that. Yeah. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. If you, there's anything that you think like sticks out or that I should pay extra attention to, let me know. Yeah. This is all good, man. Yeah, okay. I love. I just, I just love that you're getting these insights, man, because they point you in such a solid direction. Uh -huh. What do you think yeah. stands out? Like, what can I take away from this? Like, my main, the main takeaway that I'm seeing. Yeah, let me see what the main takeaway is. Let me really think about that. Okay. Well, let me ask you, what changed in your head after doing these meetings? Um. I think I got a better idea that it's like how much of it is not just having a product, but building a brand, like giving someone yep. a feeling, yep. which I kind of read on paper and knew, but I kind of saw it in action here. Right. Um, as far as where I fit in, um, I mean, really, I know I could fit in anywhere if I put my mind to it. Uh, right. I think people don't realize how powerful the new markets are because these same, these same guys might've been saying, you know, seven, eight years ago, oh, Instagram is not our thing. We don't. We oh, hundred percent. Oh yeah. But that's the thing. The reason why TikTok isn't the thing right now is because it's being associated with young people because young people are more aware of like the new social platforms. But mm -hmm. TikTok won't always be a young person platform. So to get ahead of the game on that for people with a product that is like 20, 30, 40 year old men style. And like you might actually that might actually be a little golden nugget that you don't even realize you're not hitting. Right. Yeah. Not that you should just become a TikTok ads broker, but hey, maybe you make some money doing that. Like that's the thing, man, is you know, I've got buddies who shifted their entire business model to brokering mask deals. Like these five hundred, six hundred thousand dollar mask deals, like, you know, this freaking CIA ordering masks and stuff. So like, you know, and you just you just connect two parties and you can make a lot of money doing that, you know, by seeing a need and kind of filling it. Right. Yeah. So again, yeah, that, that's kind of what I got out of it. I think I got a lot more data. I didn't really get much of a holistic theme besides like the little bit I shared with you. I think it's just like a lot more data that I got and I'm looking like, what do you see? Where do you see how I can make this video? Honestly, bro, I, I'm going to sell the package. 
it's, it's hard for me to say exactly what I see you could sell. I, and I almost want that to be your decision, if that makes sense. Cause I need okay. you to, I, I'm guiding you along this path. I need you to make the decision. I need you to see what, cause it's still testing, bro. You know, like, just like I didn't tell you to go for fashion. I'm not going to tell you what to pull away from these. I'm going to tell you though, if I were you, I would think about these two offers that I see thinking about building some sort of a customer relationship manager after they buy. Okay. Uh, and I know, I know you're really wanting me to tell you what to do, but I, I would even encourage you to view my opinion as just another opinion. Okay. Um, so like after they buy keeping that relationship somehow, um, email text, like a lot of these brands aren't using text marketing, something to think about. Cause again, they're like, that's not our brand. It's like, okay, well, what the frick does brand mean? I don't even know what you mean when you say it's not your brand, because for me, if we can build a text, like, of course, you're not going to be that rude to the owner of the brand, but right. if you can build a text marketing system where when they buy, you know, 24 hours later, they're given a 20% discount code on a item that would go really well with what they bought. You know, that's a pretty reasonable thing. Uh, so abandoned cart in general, you know, abandoned car, follow up after they buy stuff like that. Right. I, I really believe you can make a lot more money, more money for a brand, helping them make more money off the platform they've got than you can helping them grow their brand. The both, both of the two are equally important, but like when you've got like a pipeline of leads who have bought from you, often turning back to them is your best like option. If they had a good experience. Mm -hmm if you need cash now. Okay. So, you know, you can charge a brand four grand to then to write out a email sequence that you've proven to work really well for fashion brands. And you have a copywriter come in and do that for you, pay them a grand. And then you say, we want for the next six months, we want, um, you know, 15% of all the revenue generated from these emails uh, plus four grand up front. And we're just going to write you a really banging email sequence that is going to take these people who have bought with you and get them to buy again based on stats and people we've worked with who are email consultants, email marketing. You see what I'm saying? Helping them make more money with who they've, who, who's already bought with them. So it looks to me like if you're going to go in a direction, whether it's cold or working with who's already worked with them, it looks like working with who's already worked with them and getting them to buy again is a generally easier offer for you right now. Okay. What I did notice here that this guy from Taylor Stitch said, he said that he was really good. They were really good with their customer base. Can you still see the screen? Yeah, I can still see it. He's like, we're good with our customer base. We're worse at prospecting. So it seems like they're worse at the cold aspect. They're better mm. at getting people back. Right. Okay. Well, if that's the case for them, then I mean, I would say, you know, they say they're worse at prospecting. I would even follow up with him and say, Hey, from my notes on our meeting, I, I took this note down. He said, you're worse at prospecting. Like, Either we can get another meeting or if you just want to respond to this email, what have you tried and what hasn't worked when it comes to cold outreach? Okay. Like what have you tried and what hasn't worked and what have you tried that kind of worked so I can kind of see what could potentially work really well for someone. So, you know, honestly, bro, you've already had conversations with these two brands. You know, I wouldn't look for any more than one or two more brands having conversations with just like how these guys should work with who they've already worked with. In my opinion, you should also work with who you've already worked with and use these two brands you've had conversations with as like, answers to your questions because it sounds like they're really willing to help okay yeah so you think that, like the customer relations management after someone buys and if they abandon a cart as one option do you, what, mm -hmm. what are you i think you said two things uh i'm sorry what's your question you said like there were kind of like two takeaways you saw from it or like a few minutes ago yeah uh, so. it's 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 basically my two my two takeaways is one I would focus on follow up with the existing customer base, but I know they said that they're good with their customer base, but I want them to define good. And they said they're worse at prospecting. I want them to define worse at prospecting, like define that. You know, that's what they're saying, but I want to, I want to know what they mean by that. Um, and then two, I think basically the service option that I saw of like email marketing follow up or text marketing follow up of some kind. Okay. Yeah or even just building into their site a better information collector for their potential clients of some kind, anything like that. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, 
I know I, I ultimately, you want me to make the choice. Uh, yeah. You see more of a market almost for giving that a shot first rather than TikTok marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. that is. I see that. I could be wrong though. Okay. Because I do kind of want to like make a choice, but like you said, like you also want to make decisions based on like the cold hard facts and I know you're kind of used to doing this sort of analysis better than yeah. I am at least for now. Well, yeah, so. and totally. But that's the thing is you felt you were on those calls. I wasn't on them. These I'm all I'm seeing is your notes. So yeah. there's two data points here for me. It's it's one, like what I'm seeing in these notes, and then two, it's also like the feeling that is invoked in you after having this experience of speaking with these people when you think of a service that you know could help. So like you want to arrive yeah. at a level of confidence, you know. And honestly, bro, like it's yeah. that level of confidence that what you're doing is actually gonna help them that matters more than my opinion of what will or won't help them. Okay. Because I can't, because I wasn't on those calls. You see what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so yeah, I, I actually think it's interesting you said that because like after making the poll, I was like, okay, cart abandonment is the top thing. And that's kind of what you brought in like abandonment and CRM that kind of all ties together uh, like SMS and email follow-up campaigns that's what I have written here in the agenda card abandonment a response to that is SMS follow-up text yep uh, I was like all right chatbots don't look like they're gonna be a big thing uh, normal SEO and pay-per-click maybe that's a last resort if everything else fails I'll just do that uh, and right. A-B testing wasn't big TikTok was right. small but I still like part of my gut is telling me that has a shot to blow up too right and the guy from Taylor Stitch, I don't know if I wrote it down. He was like, we don't really use TikTok, but I would definitely go for that because that's a growing market. Yeah. And no one's really doing it. So yep. I'm, I'm sort of torn between the two of those. Mm -hmm. Well, you also only got two opinions from two people. Like, you know, in general, like the fact that we even got one yes out of two, like that's a 50% success rate. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. You know, so that's... So if we follow that data, that means 50% of the market would want, of course, we only have two data points, but if that stays consistent, you know, a lot of fashion brands are wanting to get on TikTok and just don't know how. Right. Mm -hmm. so there we so are. It's sort of up to me, like either, either one could work. I just kind of got to go with it, go with yeah. it and roll with it. Okay. Um, another thing is I started making uh, some posts on Facebook. You might've seen those too in all the groups like sort of like what we talked about last week. I've been doing a lot of research. I've learned a lot and I wanna teach all you people like some of the free stuff, this mm -hmm. sort of information I could probably turn into a course and sell, but I'm gonna, I just wanna to talk to you and give you free value and ask you a few optional questions. So I got a boatload of messages. I will share this with you. Yeah, let me see. I wanna see what, I started taking, keeping track of them, but then there's just like 12 people. Yeah, uh, all right. So the, like just this is making like my personal messages too, but uh, start. Mm. Okay. I had a few good ones. I'm just losing track of where they are. Yeah. This guy was selling me some financial automation. Tell me, I don't know where the, there was one guy that was amazing. You're this guy. You're All right. Facebook. Holy cow. Um, we got a few up at a time. It's, it's weird when you go to these groups, you get like all these other people like spamming you too, like trying to sell you their weird packages too. Oh yeah. Oh, for sure. All right. So this guy. I think I made kind of an, this guy, Ben, can you see it? All right. Yeah. Okay. So I think I kind of made the assumption up front that he like owned a really small brand because that's what I kind of was targeting in my, my post, like small business owners. Cause like, he said like me, I commented like, write me if you want me to give you this information and I'll flip the screen quick to backtrack. This is what I am basing all of the information I'm giving. Let me switch the share. This is, I took notes on like 30 different articles. 
it's messy, but I got like uh, this stuff I have forget about. But in the yellow, I have like different brands. I group them together, like how they found a niche. Like these brands all like are like trying to do better, you know, like uh, utilitarian stuff, like better for the world. Uh, these will like have like a really fun niche. These people use influencers. These people get attention, like by doing controversial stuff, etc. Yep. What good fashion websites do, what the website trends are, how important personalization is, uh, advertising and conversion. I just got like everything in here. Uh, Instagram marketing, which I probably won't do. Uh, yeah. And then this, this was like my main chart here. What the owner's perspective is, what my solution would be, and then what I'd be selling for the contractor. Yeah. So I already right. decided I don't like A-B testing. I don't like that bot design or this, it's probably gonna be one of these two. Like we just yep. kind of talked about, I kind of came to that conclusion like the other day. There's yep. gonna probably be one of these two. Uh, yeah. Like from the owner's perspective, what they're gonna be saying, what I'm gonna be saying, yep. like I'll increase your conversions through this. Like I'm not selling push marketing, I'm selling the increased conversions through Yes, this. yes. Uh, and the same here. Yep. I'm selling these the campaigns that are yep. effective and targeted. Uh, so then I got statistics on each one, like for email text marketing, I got a boatload of just statistics to just kind of throw out there if I'm going to sell that. Same for TikTok, <laughs> same for the other ones, even though I'm probably not going to use it. So, so I'm kind of drawing my, my information from this and the, fat, the website tips up here because mm -hmm. I know that I can just give those out for free. Mm -hmm. So let me go back to this one. Bro, this is insane. You've done, you, this is awesome. I, I don't think I've ever had a student get this, like this level of documentation. It's awesome. Really? No, never, Thanks. never. All right, so this guy, Ben, uh, I was like, hi Ben, are we doing well? What did you have in mind for the market research? I don't remember what my post looked like exactly. I should have that here somewhere. Probably a post kind of like this. Mm -hmm. Hey, Econ Fashion brand owners have been researching the fashion industry for the past several weeks. Covered a lot of fascinating, some shocking information. I'd love to teach and discuss my findings. Not selling anything. I don't even have a package to sell. Uh, and then like basically an outline of my huge document. Uh, and if you want anything, comment and I'll shoot you a message. Damn. So this guy was like on one of the other posts. Uh, what did you have in mind? I was like, first tell me a little bit about your business. He's got these two businesses. They're like a hair cream or something like that. Hmm. Uh, I was like, great, do you have websites for those brands yet? So he sends me like, you can just look at the product he's selling quick. Yeah. I know the product's not as important as like where he's positioning himself, but- 100%. Uh, he's yeah. Selling. yeah. So he's just selling like something with styling your hair. Cool. Uh, so, I asked if it was built with Shopify because it looked just like the Shopify, uh, other Shopify templates. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. It's a very basic uh, Shopify template. Yeah. So I was like, from first glance, good site, nice design, simple modern layout. Read a few dozen articles and top 12 things I noticed. Sorry if it's slightly sloppy, still in a note format. Uh, and then I like listed out those 12 things that were like really important for a website. Be like, awesome. Thank you. So the research you did was with the brand owners. I think I messed up here. It wasn't, it wasn't brand owners. It was their marketing people, but that doesn't really But matter. generally, yeah. And you could have linked the sites too. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, problem for me is I'm not always on Facebook. Like when I'm not working, like I try to keep my phone away. So sometimes I'm like a few hours before I get back to these people. Yeah. But uh, you didn't have questions for me. I do have a couple questions. This was when I still didn't know between the five. I was like, from a right. scale of one to 10, one being like, you suck at it, and 10 being, you know what you're doing with it completely and you're owning it. How are you doing with like the email uh, push text notifications, capitalizing on new markets, uh, and then the other three. The closer those are to 10 or at least six to eight, the closer you'll be to scaling to a mid-size or larger brand. Um, I didn't know he was already kind of a larger brand. He's doing like 4 million a year. Mm. Uh, but he like wrote here, it seemed like two, I think two was TikTok and Snapchat. Mm. Uh, he was weaker there. He said soon to be more. So he's definitely planning on it. Hold on just a minute. 
Okay. Um, and then he was worse with A-B testing too. Um, so, yeah, I was just kind of talking back and forth with him about it. Uh, and then here he wrote, between the two brands, 25 staff, 12 million monthly YouTube hits, 4 million US dollars. I'd watch some Sam Ovens, which I've been watching, obviously. <laughs> That's uh, funny. He told you to, Yeah. There's more to it than you're describing, but appreciate your hustle. And then I was like, if you have any more questions, you know where to find me. So Sweet. that was like my biggest interaction. I had a lot of smaller ones. Um, yeah. Yeah, Ben Weir. I would follow up with Ben with any findings you have and just send him updates, Ben. I'd keep him kind of in your network. Okay. Yeah, because he could even be a potential client. Okay. Yeah, you guys resonate a lot. You follow the same people. You guys really hit it off. Okay. Yeah, keep him in your network. So I'll keep my the Buffalo Jackson and Taylor Stitch, and I'll keep him in the loop. He's kind of a – maybe I can get on a video call with him. Oh, yeah, I think you should. I think you should. Okay. Give that you a shot. that. I think he's already got proof that you're not selling him anything and that you have some value to bring to him. Right. So you think like the value, the va level of value that I'm bringing is like pretty acceptable? Yeah, hundred percent. I think you, I think you've got a lot of knowledge. What you've got to start doing okay. is start taking this knowledge and positioning it as like essential and important. And that's how you start marketing. It. It's like, you know, like it's people there's there's logical solutions to logical problems but if there's not an emotional reason why it matters nobody cares you know so like for example like a logical solution to a business's problem of not getting leads could be facebook advertising but if they don't see that if they don't migrate to facebook that you know they're going to be stuck doing things that they don't want to do forever and won't have the kind of business that they want to have and that they won't be able to spend the free time that they want to spend with their new daughter then you know it's like well i'll just keep doing things the way that i'm doing them so like you not you don't want to just you don't want to just provide solutions to problems. You also want to paint where they're at now and paint where they want to be, mm -hmm. and sort of invoke a little pain in where they are now. So like when you go to the doctor, right? Like the doctor just asks you questions. He doesn't like make fun of you or anything. He just says like, so you know, when have you been going to sleep? And you'll just be like, you know, I'm going to sleep at this time. It's like, what's your diet? Like, what have you been eating? He's like this, and he's not judging you. He's just getting to know where you're at, and so you're secretly kind of in your head like knowing that you're not answering these questions the way that you would like to be answering them. It's so like, for example, I could go to a marketing, I can go to a brand and be like, Hey, so, you know, are you capitalizing on TikTok?" I'll be like, no. Okay. Got it. You know, have you spent any money on Facebook ads cold in the past week? No. Okay. Got it. What's your email follow-up sequence look like? If somebody buys, do you have a, do you have a sequence there? They're like, no. Okay. Got it. Is it, if you, if they do have one, you could say, is it good? What's the conversion rate? They'll be like 10%. It's like, got it. And you're just you're taking these notes when you're talking to them. And I think especially when you show them what things could potentially be and they know that they're not where they could potentially be, it's much easier to say, all right, here's my offer, you know? And that translates into your content, it translates into your conversations with potential prospects. That translates everywhere. That is not just on the phone. Everywhere you go, you are positioning yourself as a bridge to take them from where they want to be to where they want to go. That's yeah. every single conversation you have is that. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'll let you read this quick. It's actually pretty funny. Yeah. From all the, the, not much to do with my business, but all these people from these e-commerce groups, this girl here sends me this in Spanish. I put it in a translator. It's like, hey, how are you doing? I use yeah. a translator back. Like, I'm doing well. I'm using a translator. <laughs> and this here, she was trying to send, uh, sell me uh, a, like, a sorcery spell that she was going to, like, cast upon my business to, like, help it explode. Awesome. I say it's worth the investment. Oh <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're done. I'm just going to go with her now. Cool. Yeah. You just, I'll just wire back the money. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I got a few more. Do you want to look at those? Or do you think we're kind of set with that? I think, I think I generally get where you're at. Okay. Um, it looks like you've made a lot of good progress. Um, yeah, this, is, this is phenomenal, man. Kudos. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I'm going to try to talk to Wilton, Ben, and Sam, the three guys again. Um, should I be, like, do more research and making my decision, or should I just kind of make one and go with it once I just ask them some questions? Like, within the next couple of days, should I just try to make a decision and run with it? I'd make a decision and run with it. Okay. See what happens. Um, and if you're getting a lot of no's. I mean, I would even cast a net. It's like, you know, just like with niche, we do the same thing with the opera, we cast a net, see what we catch, mm -hmm. you know? 
and we don't include more like we don't inherently charge more because we're doing more for somebody that's not how that works we charge off of result so like you know it's not like you know for two thousand dollars you get this and this and this and this and then you also get this as a bonus it's like no it's like you know here's where you are now here's where we're going to get you this is the process you just glaze over the process like they don't freaking care it's like you have you know people that aren't coming back to your brand when we're going to use text marketing we're going to build a funnel there fix that yeah. for you should add like ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month in revenue so that's two thousand dollars a month plus a thousand dollar setup fee and we can get going yeah it's like that's that's you know that's and if they're like text marketing isn't really what we want you mean you really really want, you want to define why that is mm -hmm. like why don't you want that you know just just be honest like what what's really holding you back from that and if they're like well we tried it before and it didn't work you want to know okay what did you try i can actually see you because know, like you just want to you really want to get super why how what when all that and if you see that text isn't what they need you move to TikTok, see see what they think of that and like that's the thing bro is is we are concerned with merging two forces one their perception of what they need and two what they actually need if they think that something's going to help them i mean there's a lot of people out there that would just sell it and be like screw it i'm just going to sell it but really my goal is to take what they think they need tell them why the reason that they think they need that thing can also be applied to the thing that will actually help them and then get them going there Okay. Do you, like, what does that look like? In so, like, for example, time? it could be like with with yourself. In our in our in our speaking, you know, you thought that you just wanted to scale up your computer services business. I was like, mm, I'll say that's the case, but I know it's not. And then I I brought you on board, and like call one. I'm like, all right, so we need to build something scalable. I'm like, and right now, what you have isn't that scalable, because I've already got investment from you. You've already got like your trust. So it's brought you brought you through. It's like when you're on a sales call with a client, it could be like, you know, I, with a client of mine, for example, like they're like, yeah, I want to run Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter ads. I'm like, okay, sick. We can definitely do that for you. Out of curiosity, why do you want to run, run on so many platforms? And be like, well, we just want to spread our message out. I'm like, oh, got it. So you want to have like more eyes? It's like, yes. I'm like, okay. Uh, from my experience, if you just run one platform, you can actually have more eyes for cheaper instead of having to manage all these ad accounts. So uh, I'd love to just do that for you. It might actually help you more. You know, so you want to figure out why they want the thing that they want. What's the reasoning behind their desire? So then you can feed that desire into your offer. Okay. Yeah. So I guess practically that would be looking at like, how are you doing in, in TikTok marketing and kind of like invoke that pain. And then at the same time, figure out what they're like, what they want out of it. And then like figuring out, interpreting what they really want out of it. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Uh, kind of switching gears um, my goal I think is the next couple days or at least by the end of the week decide on one of these and just start just start rolling with it either TikTok or card abandonment slash CRM mm -hmm. uh, finding a contractor um, I don't think I asked you this like originally when I thought like I was close to being done finding the first the first contractor the first time uh, yeah. I watched uh, Bastion's video he uh -huh. He was he put something out about finding contractors and they're like really good. I learned a lot from it. Uh -huh. um, he was talking about um, paying like a fixed percentage, or no, not a. He was talking about giving like a percentage versus paying fixed, plus giving like a minimum. What would you recommend? Like, let's say that I decide I'm going to sell something like you know a thousand dollar a month or two thousand dollar a month package. Do I, you know, what what works better? I mean, yeah. So I mean. I wouldn't even really decide it up front because it really depends on the sort of deal you land and the details of that deal. But if you want, if you want something to just kind of pocket for later, um, you know, just in case I would just do a percentage of the deal plus something like, just like what, basically what Bastion said, cause that's what I taught Bastion to do. <laughs> so, yeah. You have like a minimum too, like let's say you're giving them 30%, you get like a thousand dollar deal, like maybe instead of giving them 300, maybe you have like a $500 minimum. Oh, 100%. Yes, yeah, that's, that's great insight. So I would, I don't pay them any less than like 300 bucks a month for pretty much any job. Like, I mean, unless, unless it's like right now I have a VA that moves over my recorded calls on Zoom to the mm -hmm. course, like that's like 50 bucks a month. Like it just takes them an hour at the end of the month. I just don't have to worry about it. You know, it's like, you mm -hmm. know, there's different roles, but when it comes to like agency work, I've never found, like, I think you want to have a minimum in place and say either 20% or like 15% or 10% or this minimum, whichever is more. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. So it almost seems to me like I'm getting used to the thinking like like an owner instead of a contractor. Uh, yep. It almost seems like theoretically, could a brand just look for the right contractors and if they found the right ones, get the same results as using me as an agency for much cheaper, but it's like a big risk. Yeah. Okay. But in so theory, sort of they like, could also just not be selling what they sell and somebody could just make the leather bag at home with their own leather. Right. I mean, you know, so yeah, you can, you can talk, you can talk that way all day. Like in theory, you know, in theory, you could have just, you know, smelted your own sand and made your own plastic and made your glasses yourself with your own casting stuff. Right. So it's like, yeah. you know, it's like, like we could, yeah. So yeah, definitely. And that's a false belief that a lot of beginners have. Like, why don't they just go do this themselves? But you don't realize the time when we sit on my friend, the, what's in your head and the understanding that you have of their problems is the sale. Because mm -hmm. okay. of course they could do it all themselves, but like, why should they? And why would they? Like, what's the point in that? They're paying for the simplicity of it. Just like a drug, man, like a drug, you know, humans, we hate shots. And we also don't like rubbing things all over our body. We don't like taking certain baths. We don't like it tasting nasty. Like we just want a small mm -hmm. pill that doesn't have any sort of a taste that goes down easy, that solves our problem. Right? Yeah. So our job is to take these hard problems, turn them into packageable solutions that are easy to swallow. Okay. Kind of like, yeah, just swallow a pill. Exactly. Yeah. That's been my thing this whole time, man. So, you know, you're selling, you're selling pill sized solutions to body sized problems. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Dude. That's yeah. It's, it's crazy. Like the stuff you're saying is the same stuff that you said in your, uh, like that little sales thing that I watched in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes so much more sense. Like now it's kind of in context. It's kind of yeah. cool. I, I should, like, I oh, just like, watch people are like, oh, there's no way this stuff works. I'm like, you don't know how the world works, man. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, so for my game plan, I'm going to like keep TikTok and CRM in mind. Last week talking to you, I had five or six plans. Now I got two. I hope by my next call to have one yep. and just like plow forward. Uh, cool. Do you see like, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. But do you see it like plausible getting a client like within the next month or two? By, I see it totally you know, plausible. I see it totally plausible, completely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I, that's the thing is I'm, we got to stay mentally detached from that. It's a result of a few actions, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, you know, winning, winning, winning the battle happens years before the battle. Uh -huh. So what we're doing right now is, is causing that result. So yeah, 100%. Yep. It may or may not, we're not attached to it. We're attached to what we're doing right now. Yeah. You know? And objectively, we're pointing ourselves in the direction of getting a client, but we're not attached to that outcome. We're attached mm -hmm. to being really good at what we do. And then the natural outcome is that we get clients. Really. Like today has been like a four and a half thousand dollar day for me, I think. And I've had, I've worked like three hours. And like, it's not that I worked three hours and made four and a half thousand dollars. It's that I've worked for three years, made my time worth more than it used to be. Built systems, yeah. built leverage, built offers. You know, like uh -huh. this day was made the past three years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome though. Congrats. Thanks, dude. I've got one more sales call too. So it could be like an $8,000 day if it goes well. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so like for a game plan, I got that guy, Ben, that I talked to. I'm going to try to get on a call with him. I'm going to just ask him like the same questions I asked those other guys and just kind of like look for a pattern because three is probably better than two. I'm going to yep. follow with Wilton and Samuel. I'm going to ask him about the two niches specifically. Abandoned cart, TikTok, see what they say. Um, and for TikTok, probably go into more are you don't want to get into it because you don't know what the hell you're doing. I'm not going yeah. to say that, but, or, or you're, you don't want to get into it because you just really just think that it's like statistically and logically won't work for you. Right. And try to like decipher. You, yeah, you, you definitely want to have him define why he's afraid of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's probably going to be a stupid reason. It often is, man. Because, like, anytime there's money sitting there and you're not grabbing it, like, it's often just some weird false belief. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. So that's what I'm going to do first. Narrow down between the two of those. I'm going to try to choose one. Uh, so between choosing one of those niches and getting sales calls, I'm going to have to be providing value. Right? Yes. yes. So should I just be kind of doing the same thing in those groups? Just like, providing stats, but this time just more specifically, instead of just like, I will help your brand, like specifically, like 
don't know why you're not growing on TikTok. Here's four reasons why or whatever. That sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. You got it. Um, okay. And after that, I'm going to be getting people to just like engage with me, like say like if you want three more reasons or, you know, whatever it is, just get them to talk to me and just help them for free. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. How do I turn it into yep. like a, how do I turn that into a sales call from like, I'm helping you for free. When do I know when to just help them and leave them be and yep. when to be like, Hey, I can help you more. Well, these Let's people, talk. you want to make sure that all these people involved are aware that you're developing an offer. They got to okay. be aware of your intention. Not, they don't have to be necessarily aware that you're going to sell them. Just aware that yeah, I'm asking you questions because I want to develop a agency that specializes in fashion brands. And they'll be like, oh, sick, you know? And then when it comes time for the sale, they might actually be a pretty easy sale because they'll have a little bit of ownership in your progress. So it's kind of like you want to make your intent known, you know? So like, for example, like it's such a powerful thing, man, that within the first couple minutes of somebody meeting you, they know your intent, you know? Yeah. And you own that intent. You don't say, I'm going to sell you. You say, you know, I run an agency and we help you guys. And I want to ask you some questions, you know? Yeah, like, I know it's cool, like, but it's, it's the same way with girls, which is kind of interesting. Dude, like that's, I like, use that example all the time. I use that example all the time. Yeah. It's like my girlfriend now, within 30 minutes of meeting me, she knew that I was interested. Like I asked her, so she, we were at Bible study and uh, we were going to go eat after the group. And mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, hey, I think, I think you're pretty cool. You should, I'll, I'll, you want to ride to... The restaurant. She's like, yeah, sure. We had a conversation in the car. I was putting out obvious hints, obvious signals. Within like three days, you know, I asked her out. So it's just like, you know, you just, it's the same thing with business, man. You just have your intent. Have you have a very clear intent. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm doing the same thing with business that I kind of did with that last year. Like just kind of like doing some approaches out of nowhere. It's like going into a cold shower. It's scary as hell, but like mm -hmm. once you do it a few times, it's like, get yeah, it's just whatever. It's like, just do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just, you just, like, you got to understand that too, at the end of the day, your offer is what gives you that confidence. So like for me, like a part of why I'm confident with her is because I know that, you know, I'm, a, I'm generally like a really good dude, like got a great business. I got good morals. I'll be a great guy to date. Good guy to marry. So I'm like, boom, business, got a great offer. I can really help people. So I'm just, I move, I make my intent known. So once you trust your offer, you can trust the process of attracting people. There's no lack of confidence there. So again, the battle's won before the battle's fought, my friend. So you have to develop a really good offer, know your crap. And then when you're in the field talking to a prospect, they sense, they feel that. Mm -hmm. That's got to help with rejection too. Cause like, you know, that, that instead of you failing, they're they losing a fit. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Exactly. That's it, man. Dude, spot on, dude. I'm so excited for you, man. This is a breakthrough call. I feel like I'm so stoked. I kind of like went through all my questions really quick in the agenda. So I'm like thinking like what to ask you all. while I, I mean, dude, if, if that's the thing, brother, if you're done, you're done. Like, you know, if, if we have nailed everything we need to nail, like why keep small talking? Like, let's just get back yeah. to it. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess I'll, I'll keep it for a few minutes. I actually, maybe this may be the first time. Not like some the first few calls. I was like, oh, I didn't ask him this question. Now yeah. I feel like I've got a just kind of a better handle on things. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, man, is as, as, you begin to become more clear on what actions you need to take. My goal becomes less helping you through the fog and more just showing you what the next tiny little, doop, 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 doop. it's very simple. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't become so foggy anymore. So now we're a lot less foggy, like compare yourself to two months ago or whenever we started on how the heck am I going to get a client? Now you kind of, you know, hey, you're pretty aware of how you decline actually. You're pretty, uh -huh. pretty sure. I mean, you know, we've, we've got a process, we've got, a, we've got an offer that we can sort of understand. We can get a contractor on board. So now it's really, like my calls with Bastion Slot, for example, we have a call for 10 minutes. Like he's at 40, 50 grand a month. I help him for 10 minutes and I'll add another five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month for him because we're niched down. It's the Prevo principle. You've heard of the 80-20 rule? Yeah. Yeah. 20% of the efforts affect 80% of the results. And then 20% of that 20%. And then 20% of that 20%. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And as you scale your field of focus gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to where you need less and less and less and less input. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that, uh, I think something about contractors. That's one more question I had. Like, uh, what do I do? Like if I go with the TikTok route, cause I know if I go with the email route, there's going to be like, I'm going to get a boatload of people that like, Oh, you know, I've ran these campaigns. It's going to be easy to find someone. 
TikTok, yeah. I feel, is more like the Wild West. Like, it could fall flat on its face, but it could it could be, like, something where I just explode, too. Like, I feel like... Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea with TikTok. I literally have no idea. I've never run ads. Don't know anybody that has. No clue. Yeah. So, it's like, no. I could fail. I could do, ama- like, more amazing than ever before with that. Yeah. So, for finding a contractor for that, I did a quick search on Upwork, and, like, there was, like, one person who said they did it. So what do I do if there's no one that fits the role right? Uh, try think... try onlinejobs.ph, uh, join some Facebook groups, see if there's TikTok marketing Facebook groups. Uh, you can okay. just have somebody sign a W-2 and they're your contractor. They don't have to come from one of these contractor websites. If they're looking for work, they're looking for work, you know? Okay. Um, so yeah, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, anything like that for TikTok marketing. Uh, W-2. Uh... Talk to an accountant. Uh, I... I literally, honestly, couldn't even like. If you know somebody who's an accountant, my accountant handles all that bull crap. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I am. That's like the one thing that. It's not I a limiting would, belief. I just hate yeah. it. I'm bad at it. It's. it's yeah, awful. it's a limiting I mean, belief because right. honestly, brother, the worst case scenario is you're starting to make some money and you owe a little bit more in taxes than you thought you did. That's the worst case scenario. Okay. It's not that bad. Not that big a deal. I'd still rather just pay someone up front. Like once I start making money, just probably mm-hmm. hire an accountant and I'll have them take care of it for me. Yeah. I pay mine 150 bucks a month plus like $2,000 yearly for taxes. And it's so worth it. Cause he just tells me how much I owe. He starts taking it out and by the time tax season hits, it's not that big of a hit. Yeah. That's good. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, well, I got you. Um, I'm going to be uh, finishing those books this week, probably. Uh, I'm going to probably go ahead and get the Dale Carnegie book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I'm sure that will cool. help with, like, sales calls, too, and interacting, because I think I'm oh, yeah. a little bit robotic interacting with these people. I want to kind of yeah. turn it a little bit. No, you, you, you are as robotic as I wish I could be. <laughs> like, with your, <laughs> okay. with your, like, data analysis stuff, dude, like, that's it's such an advantage, man. That's why I'm so proud of it for you, because it's like, I just – Bro, I am this weird mix of like an artsy freaking gypsy. And then I'm also some logical robot on the other part of my brain and the two clash all the time. So uh-huh. yeah, I love that you could just be super data driven. It's, it's going to give you such an advantage, man. And as you build your team too, find people who are more creative and they're going to balance you out a lot. Okay. Yeah, balance definitely. you out a lot. Yeah. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get that book, the how to win friends and influence people. I want to be a little bit better, like talking to people myself. I'm great in person, I think at social yeah. events, but like when it comes to online Facebook and stuff, I just like too much of a robot. So I got to yeah. fix that up. Yeah. Would you, could you give me one more recommendation? Like I'm going to buy another book with that. Um, another recommendation in regards to people? No, just like where you think I am, like what book you think would help me the most? What book would help you the most with where you are? Um, the Lean Startup by Eric Rice is a really good one. Yeah. I think I've recommended it to you. Yeah, I didn't get it, so I'll get those two. Yeah. Oh, dude, I I do feel like I've kind of got like some clarity now, which is it's pretty cool. So, oh. yeah. Crash you over the hedge, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh. that's worth that's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, bro. I'm so stoked for you. It is. Yeah. Like, I feel like I talked to my dad yesterday. I had a conversation with him. Like him and my brother are the only two people that really know about like me going into this. I kind of want to save talking to other people until I have. Yeah. Keep your head down, man. Yeah. I don't think there's like any point, like I'm going to get big. Like I I don't want to talk to anyone about it. So my dad knows my brother knows. Yeah. People will think you're stupid and you're going to take it as people doubting you and you're going to grow resentment. Just keep your head down. Right. So yeah, they're the only two that know. And yesterday I drove with my dad down to Indiana. He was like, how's it going? Like with the, the business coach thing you're doing? I was like, it's going pretty well. It's a lot of work. Uh, I kind of understand, like, I understand business much better, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said something to me, which I like made me a little sad. He's 54. Mm-hmm. He was like, uh, I think that like, I would enjoy that type of thing, but I don't have any good business ideas. And I was like, man, like you could, like, you could just, it's not about selling something brand new it's just taking something that's there and like connecting the right people yes dude but just that realization man is literally literally that realization is what makes people millionaires <laughs> like like dude i and i know them in my network like they're they're friends of mine like that's the realization that drives progress for business owners brother you don't have to make something new man yeah 
but I just keep, I can't Super, wait to see you can be, when I got my first client. Yeah, you can be horrifically unoriginal. Frankly, I've gotten to where I'm at copying people I look up to. Like, that's uh -huh. it. That's yeah, just that's it. I, that's what yeah. I hope to keep doing. So. Yeah. Dude, I think like we, we covered everything pretty quick. So sweet. All right, man. Well, I got. I'm actually gonna. I'm actually gonna end this a little early. Get a little prep for my next sales call. Um, awesome. And yeah, man. Keep keep me posted on your journey, bro. I, I love where you're at. You're an action taker. You're a doer. You're a logical robot brain thinker, and that's gonna be super valuable for you. And uh, man, we're just we're gonna fly, bro. I can't wait to tell your story. Dude, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Hundred percent. See you next All week. Right, man. Stay blessed. You too.